they're back. I knew it couldn't last. Food was more available in the kitchen, but the humans put out too many traps and even a little poison. So the mice returned to our nice, safe attic. Hey, this could come out all right, though. I've already helped Gramps get all the scripts in order, and I helped Granny tidy up the costumes, and I saved that little mouse that time, and I dusted the inside of the theater without anyone asking me to, and, oh, yeah, I've been nice all week long to Joanna, and that was kind of hard. Uh, I'm sure God must be really pleased with me already, but if I could think of a solution for the mouse problem, I'm sure... God would be so impressed. You think so, Noah? Oh, hi, Gramps. I, uh, see you discovered the mice have returned. Yeah, I noticed all right. I don't know whether to be angry or flattered that they always go right for my hair. <laughs> Better your hair than mine. Uh, <laughs> I heard your list of good deeds. Very impressive. You sound just like the Pharisee in Luke 18, 9 through 14. Pharisee, aren't those the Jewish leaders who were against Jesus? Yes, most of them refused to believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus told a parable about the Pharise a Pharisee and a tax collector who both went to the temple to pray. The Pharisee stood up and said, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, robbers and evildoers and adulterers, or even this tax collector. You know, uh, the tax collectors were looked on as thieves and traitors because they worked for the Romans. This Pharisee also told God, I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all I get. Oh, so he must have been pretty special to God. Well, he sure thought so. But he wasn't really praying, Noah. He was announcing to everyone in earshot how wonderful he was. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven. But he beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus told the people, I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. But he who humbles himself will be exalted. Oh, because the tax collector knew he was a sinner, and he asked for mercy and forgiveness. And the Pharisee thought he was so good he didn't even need to ask for forgiveness. But Gramps, we're supposed to do good stuff and help each other. Of course we are. But who could do enough to earn God's love and forgiveness? We do good because we love him and others and... Uh, if we start keeping track of our good deeds, we get self-righteous and start looking down on others. That's pride. The book of Proverbs lists 14 things that God particularly hates, and pride, according to Proverbs 16.5, is one of them. Proverbs 16.18 says, Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Oh, and we please God by loving and serving him out of love and serving others because we love and by following Jesus. There are many, many teachings in the Bible about pride and humility. Noah, how can any of us be proud when we, like that tax collectors, know that we are sinners and we are forgiven and have eternity with God only because he sent his son, Jesus, to save us? I see. That makes sense. And it's so cool. I'd much rather do things for others and for God out of love than out of obligation and to, to impress God. I mean, who's good enough to impress God? Now you got it. Take my life and let it be consecrated lord to thee take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love at the impulse of thy love 
Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my king. Always only for my king. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages for thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my love, my God, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only